So now that we have an expression for thrust, we're ready to move on to the efficiency. So what we're really interested in here is determining how efficiently the engine converts energy from one form to another on its way to producing thrust. So if we start with our overall efficiency and think about that in the base terms of what you get over what you pay for. We can think of this as the propulsive power. over the, bear with me, fuel power. <laughs> so let's define what these mean. The propulsive power is the thrust times the flight velocity, right? Because force times velocity as units of power. So this is just F u naught. The fuel power is the fuel mass flow rate times the fuel energy per unit mass. M dot F, H, F, enthalpy, which is fuel. So then we can write eta overall equals F times U naught over M dot F, H, F. Now it's useful to break this up into two further components. Thermal efficiency and propulsive efficiency. So we can write that the thermal efficiency is the rate of production of kinetic energy divided by the fuel power. I'll drop the quotes. So this is m dot e u e squared over 2 minus m dot naught u naught squared over 2. Change in kinetic energy over m dot f hf. Then we also have the propulsive efficiency, which is the propulsive power. over the rate of production of kinetic energy. So this, if we write mathematically, is F times U naught over M dot E U E squared over two minus M dot naught U naught squared over two. Okay, and then if you combine these you see that the overall efficiency is just a product of the thermal and propulsive efficiencies. So this thermal efficiency is no different than what you've seen in thermodynamics and for the Brayton ideal the ideal Brayton cycle. So the thermodynamics, uh, sorry, the thermal efficiency for the ideal Brayton cycle is W net over Q in is one minus T one over T two, where T one is the 
compressor inlet temperature and T2 is the compressor outlet temperature. Okay, now, recall our equation for thrust, F is m dot E, U E minus m dot naught U naught plus P E minus P naught over A E. And remember that this is typically small. And if we think about this, m dot e must just be equal to m dot naught plus the fuel mass flow rate, m dot f. But m dot f is much, much smaller than m dot naught. So we can approximate this and say that m dot e is approximately equal to m dot naught, which we'll just call m dot. So, since this second term is also typically small, we can simplify a great deal and say that F is approximately equal to M dot U E minus U naught. And if we apply this to the definitions of efficiency, then it simplifies quite a bit. And the propulsive efficiency is M dot U naught U E minus U naught over m dot over 2 ue squared minus u naught squared. And this can be simplified to 2 u naught over u naught plus ue, so that we get a very simple expression for the propulsive efficiency, or at least the approximate propulsive efficiency, which is 2 over 1 plus u e over u naught. So this is a really interesting and useful equation because it has direct implications for the design of a propulsion system. So let's see what that means. So since the thrust is approximately m dot u e minus u naught and the propulsive efficiency is Q over 1 plus UE over U naught, then we can write this as F divided by M dot U naught, so that this is non-dimensional, is U E over U naught minus 1. So what we see is that as UE over U naught increases, the non-dimensional thrust, thrust per unit mass flow, increases as well. But the propulsive efficiency decreases as UE over U naught goes up. And if we use the limiting low value of UE over U naught of 1, then we see that the thrust goes to zero, but the propulsive efficiency goes to one. So the production of high thrust per unit mass flow is in direct opposition to achieving high propulsive efficiency. Now, also note that as F over M dot u naught increases, the engine size, what I mean by the size is basically the frontal area, the area of the inlet, decreases for a given thrust and flight speed. So this means that the drag due to the engine nacelle, the outer casing of the engine.
goes down. Because the skin friction drag on the nacelle is basically proportional to the nacelle surface area. So I can sketch that like this. This. Inlet, and there's some U naught coming in. In class, we'll discuss the trends that result from this and the trade off between propulsive efficiency and thrust uh, per unit mass flow. Now, you'll basically get, discuss this more in class, as I say, but essentially you get a curve that looks like this, F over M dot U naught, propulsive efficiency, and basically there's a curve that looks like that, where U E over U naught increasing is moving down the curve and to the right. Now, where a given engine design will end up on this curve depends on the mission of the aircraft it's to be used for. And we'll talk more about missions and how they affect aircraft design in a couple of weeks. But just to give you a quick example, of a fighter aircraft, these need high thrust to weight ratios and also fly at high speeds. So this means that F over M dot U naught must be high, U E over U naught will be high, and the propulsive efficiency will tend to be low. Another example is a transport aircraft, like a regular commercial aircraft which has high efficiency as a requirement and flies at lower speed so that F over M dot U naught is lower U E over U naught tends towards 1 and the propulsive efficiency will be high There's some other useful efficiency-related parameters that we can define for engines, and these are often used in industry. Now, note note that these quantities have dimensions. unlike efficiency, which of course is dimensionless. So the first of these that is commonly used is called specific impulse. Uh, you'll see this as I or ISP. I'll just use I, and it's the thrust over the fuel weight flow rate. This has units of time, seconds. So I is F over M dot F G. And basically, barge is good. Another commonly used metric in industry is the thrust-specific 
fuel consumption. Um, TSFC, or commonly just SFC, specific fuel consumption. SFC is the mass flow rate of fuel. divided by the thrust. So it's almost the inverse of the uh, specific impulse, but without the inclusion of the gravitation term in the fuel flow. So this will have units either of pound mass per hour times pound force, or in a slightly more sane metric system, kilograms per second times newton. And for this, well, it's good. Note, the SFC will have different numerical values in these two sets of units. 